today on Deadbeat. He has seven kids with three moms, and he's $29,000 behind in his child support. How many children do you have, Miss Mullen? Uh, four, well, three. And it's all adding up to one big mess. And now the judge is ready to clean it all up. Plus, court records show he's behind with child support for his 13-year-old. And now he says he's not the father. Judge Erica Lee Williams takes up that case. I'm Nicole Compton, and court is now in session on Deadbeat. I'm Nicole Compton with Deadbeat, the show that takes you inside the courtroom of child support court with people you may very well know. Today, we have a full docket with both men and women in serious criminal trouble for not paying their child support. With me is legal advisor, Oliver Barber, and he's here to help us understand exactly what we're about to see today. These are real cases, Oliver. And I think these kinds of cases will help us understand what goes on with the court system. I think they'll help us understand what happens when you get behind on child support and why you need to take care of your children. Right, and these are real criminal cases, so child support is way behind. If they're this far, then they're looking at jail or prison, and they want to find some way to pay the, pay the money that they owe. Well, hopefully we'll see the solutions today. Our first case on the docket today involves a man who has seven kids with three different moms. He has two pay orders and his case has become one big mess. Let's see if Judge Sean Delahanty can help him sort it all out. All right, Mr. Lee, and you have a $90 a week pay order and it looks like there's, is there a wage assignment? Yes, sir. Now, it's uh, peculiar. I can't quite understand this, how this is working, uh, because they're taken on the same day. They took out $73.23, and they took out $37.55. And I don't know why there's two separate amounts coming out of, or being recorded out of your check. Um, I, I believe because I have two different children that I'm paying on, or well, different mothers that I'm paying to. Now this, well, this is all coming to this, uh, this case here, which I think is with Mullins, Joy Mullins, the children you have with Joy Mullins. Yes, sir. Uh, maybe is it, is it because I'm bad weekly? Uh, it might be. So, well, but I think what is happening here, so you get paid every two weeks. Yes, sir. All right. And where are you working? At McDonald's. All right. How long have you been there? Uh, a little over three months, man. Okay. Now you have a large uh, rearage here, so that you, you're like twenty-nine thousand dollars behind. And how many children do you have, Miss Mullins? Uh, four. Well, three. Three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we're going to. I'll get you a public defender. Oh, you need to hang on to that job. Yes, sir. Um, okay. How many sets of kids do you have? Well, I have uh, three with my current wife, and I have three by Miss Mullen. Uh, yes, and uh, one by Lisa. Uh, All right. Do you have uh, two separate pay orders? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, let, let me get a public defender. I'm gonna let you. you you'll talk to this lawyer. This lawyer will uh, help you uh, present uh, your arguments, your best arguments. I need to know uh, the pay order that exists for this other single child that you have, right? That's right. So you got, you got three at home, three with Miss Mullins, and then there's a single child. That's right. So I need to, what, need to know what the pay orders are, because here you have with uh, these three children, with Miss Mullins, it's $90 a week. That's right. And, and you need to bring all your paycheck stubs in. You need to hang on or some kind of record of uh, how, how many hours you're working, what your wages are, uh, what your income is. Because we need to figure out a way uh, to make this possible for you to stay out of jail. Thank you, sir. Well, and number one, can I tell you number one? Let's get this problem solved from the get-go. You need to get a job. You need to hold a job. You need to be working because if you're not, you got no shot. That's right. I understand. Yeah, okay. And uh, we'll talk about it. Let's talk about it some more after we get you a lawyer. But I want you to, uh, if you could, and your lawyer may tell you this, and your lawyer may help you do this, I need you to get all of your pay orders together. I need to know 
how much money uh, you've been ordered to pay. Then I need to know how much money you're making. I need to know how many hours a week that you're working. I'm sorry, and sir. Sir, I, I believe I, I, my last appearance, I gave a copy of, of my uh, check stubs. If it will help any. It will. But the point here is this. We need to have a history that you're paying in child support. Okay. We need to I see understand. that you're paying in child support. We need to see that you're working. We need to figure out how many hours you're working, whether you need to... Uh, We'll solve this problem, but first uh, we need to uh, uh, get you a public defender and uh, get ourselves organized. Well, here we see seven kids with three moms. It ends up being a big mess. With so many multiple orders, sometimes it can be confusing on who gets paid what. Not only that, but the fact situation here is so bad that most of the time I tell people that if it's legal and it's law, we can find some way to get around it. This case looks to me like he's on a slippery slope that you cannot keep him off of. Well, my hopes is that he gets it together, that he's able to figure out who gets paid what so that we don't see him in the slammer. There's much more to come on this edition of Deadbeat. Next, he's been in and out of work and way behind on his child support. Now he says he's not the dad. Then we have years of you not paying anything, but now have a motion again in family court about a 13-year-old in paternity. We'll go to court for that case next on Deadbeat. <laughs> Nicole Compton, back with you on Deadbeat the show that shines the spotlight on uncollected child support here in Louisville, Kentucky. What you are about to see is real cases, real people, and real problems. Every case we show you has become so serious that it's wound up in criminal child support court. Right now, it's the case of Thomas Benford, who's only made one of his required child support payments in the last year. Prosecutors want to throw him in jail Let's see what Judge Erica Lee Williams says. No worries. All right, Mr. Benford is present, Judge. It is our motion to continue. I know it's the county's motion to sentence today. Um, Mr. Benford has brought with him a motion that he has before or will have before family court regarding this child, both okay. his children. He has hired Marty Cute on that case. And okay. Marty is supposed to also take this case, but I don't think quite knew that it was on this afternoon. Okay. Um, Mr. Benford did lose his job, but he starts at Malone staffing tomorrow. So okay. he understands that despite the fact that he may have something going on in family court that may resolve a child support issue, he may or may not be, it's essentially a paternity issue. He understands that he is still responsible for the arrearages. Mm -hmm. If, if and when the family court decides he's no longer responsible from this point forward, but until that time he is required to pay. Um, but I think the fact that he lost his job caused that issue between last time and this time. But again, he does. He brought his um, paperwork from from Malone staffing here today to start tomorrow. Okay. Mm. You are. What's your name? Diego Hall. Okay. She's. Um, we went to court for a paternity. He said he was not the child father, and the judge denied that. When was that motion? It was two months ago. Two months ago? Okay. How how old? How many he children are we talking about? Off on a form, September two thousand four. The judge told him stating that he was the child's father. Okay. In How old? Are we talking about one one child or two? One child. One child. The child is thir thirteen. He will be thirteen. Thirteen. Eleven the next May. Thirteen. And so you're saying that you all have already gone through family court about this? Yes, months before in 2004. Said he is the father. He was no, not. It was it. He signed off on the paper ten years ago, September 2004. Right. Okay. Stating that he was the father, and the judge said that that's it. He was the father. He wasn't dealing with that no more. Okay. We're supposed to be paying. $70 a week, so we've had one payment this year. You said he lost his job when, last month? Last month, and I just uh, got to start my loans tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Where were you working before I was doing contract, job? contract work. Where? Working, just doing, on houses. Okay, and how long have you been doing that? Seven. How long had you been doing that? I've been doing it for years. 
Years, okay. Yes, ma'am. So why did you only make one payment then? Because I lost a job going to court. The guy got rid of me. When was that? Back in July. Okay, so you were working before July then, right? I was working and I lost my job when I was going to family court. In July? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you were working starting in January, right? Yes, ma'am. Well, so, January, I hadn't, found a, I hadn't had a job and came back and got a job and lost a job again and got restored a job because it's family court. Okay, when's the last time that you worked? In July. And then you lost your job in July? Yes, ma'am. So before that, when did you work? I was working in Malone's. When? When? Uh, June. Let me see. Why weren't you making any payments? I didn't have no money because confusion going on back and forth to family court. That's what the confusion was. Did you have was. any jobs? I didn't have no jobs between that contract job was under the table and then the Malone job was on clock. Whether it was under the table, over the table, yes, you got fired at one point, whatever. At some period of time, you were between. making money and you weren't making any payments on child support. And that's what I'm trying to ask you is why that wasn't happening. Oh, because I didn't have no job after I got fired. This is turning out to be a classic case of he said, she said. What will the judge say in the end? We'll find out when Debbie continues. Nicole Compton back with you here on Deadbeat, the show that takes you inside our local child support court. We've been watching the case of Thomas Benford. Court records show he's way behind on his child support. And now, Mr. Benford is trying to say he's not even the dad. Let's go back to court now with Judge Erica Lee Williams presiding. Yes, ma'am. The motion that he handed you mm -hmm. for paternity is the motion we already went in front of the judge for. Ten years ago? No, I think it was just this past this August. Is just, oh, just, just this past? That's the motion we already went in front of the judge for that motion. He told him, you are the father. You signed the paper ten years ago. He so didn't. we're done, right? So okay. we're done with that. So is there still something pending in family court then, Mr. Yes, ma'am. I'm getting the lawyer, Marty Cusman, represent, represent me in that court. He told me to put that to your attention. Okay. And when I get a job, I'm come back and talk to him because I share some other confidential. Okay, and I don't want to hear anything yes, confidential that you told him, okay? You are you have attorney-client privilege. I want you to exercise that Yes, right. ma'am. So here's the problem we have, Mr. Benford. You said you're supposed to start a job when? Tomorrow. 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 Okay, and we want you to start that job. Here's the problem that we have. We don't have consistent employment, and we certainly don't have consistent payments, okay? Yes, ma'am. And all the while, the 13-year-old has to eat and be clothed every day. Yes, ma'am. And I understand that you have something, or you believe you have something, again, pending in family court. But as it stands right now, you're ordered to pay $75 a week, or $70, I'm sorry, $70 a week, and that has not happened. It has not happened for some time. Contest anything you want to do in family court, whatever it is you've got going on, we're going to get some payments over here, okay? And we're going to do that because I'm going to put you in custody via TIA. So we'll put you, you have somewhere to do home incarceration, Ms. Rafe? Do you have somewhere to do home incarceration? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to sentence you to 365 days. We're going to put you in the TIA program with those releases. That's going to help you with your resume, help you get a job, help you stay current in what you're supposed to do. And we're going to get some payments going. Okay. Can I say one thing? Mm -hmm. And then when I was in family court, they said they had me paying one payment. Then that's why um, there's confusion on that part as far as... It's never been zero. So whatever you're confused about, it's never been a zero. They said one price it. and there, and then it's in here they said right. something else. But whatever it was, you weren't paying anything. I would hear you if you said, they told me $100 and I was paying this. You haven't paid anything. So you've never been told it was zero. Right? Right? Right. Okay. So I'm telling you now, $70, that's, that's a minimum. Whatever they're telling you over there, that's what they're telling you over there. There's no confusion that you need to be paying something, and there's no confusion you haven't. There's no confusion that you can't give me a correct pay history on what you've been paying or where you've been working or anything else. So we're going to put you in TIA. We're going to help you turn it all around so you can get the payments going with this 13-year-old. As of now, he's going to be put into the TIA program. If he's not been making any payments, then he's showing me he doesn't want to take advantage of the TIA program, and you're just serve in jail. You just sit in there. Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that, Ms. Hall? All right, Mr. Benford, do you understand what's expected of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is a case where now he's screaming after 13 years that he's not dead. For 13 years, you've been dead. So in the lies of the court, you're going to have to pay. When that court order was entered that said he was the father, there's no way around that unless you can come back with a DNA analysis and ask that the child support going forward be stopped. But going backwards, won't going to help him. 
Right. And some judges don't even want to see a DNA test. After 13 years, the child is almost grown. You're the dad that the child knows, and you admit it. Well, it's a basic concept. Is if the child knows you as a father, then the court is going to treat you as a father, and that'll continue. You don't want to mess the child up by changing that. And regardless, we're in criminal court, not family court. Family court is where paternity is actually established. So here, the issue is moot. That's great. You're the dad. Stay tuned, because we have more cases to come. Next, how much is too much? This man is supposed to pay $175 a week. Kind of tough when you're locked up in jail. See what happens with this one next on Deadbeat. Nicole Compton, back with you again here on Deadbeat. This is the show that takes you inside Jefferson County's criminal child support courts. Every case you'll see has become so serious that it's now a criminal matter. And in the case of James McLeod, failure to pay child support has landed him in jail. We've seen him in shackles on this show before, but Judge Sean Delahanty has a plan to get him back in line, and it seems to be working. Let's listen in as Mr. McLeod comes back to court. Hey, Mr. McLeod. We have been trying to work through this case for some time, and what we're trying to do really is uh, get a long-term solution, right? Now, how old are your children with Miss Collins? Seven. Seven. So you got one child, seven years old. One by her. Well, that's what I'm saying. But that's the one that's got you jammed up here because you've got a 365-day jail sentence. You had uh, a violation, and it had to be for, was it drugs or alcohol, right? You tested positive for drugs or alcohol? Probably alcohol when yeah. I was in CCC. Now, you're supposed to be paying $175 a week in child support, and uh, you have one child with Ms. Collins? Yes. And it's a $175 a week child support order? It's been that way for six years. I got you. Um, I think the only way that we're going to solve this problem long term is for you to complete the uh, day reporting center. Now, uh, this, and I may need to talk to the uh, day reporting center myself uh, because this hundred. Do you have other sets of children, or is this? I do. And uh, how many pay orders do you have? Just this one. Okay. Does do the other children live with you? No. Okay. Sometimes. But you don't have a court order that says you're required to pay child support to the mother of that child? No. Okay. All right. I think you're benefiting from the day reporting center, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'm proud of the fact that you are paying your child support, doing the best you can. Is it possible I can be out of custody and still have to complete that program? Um, now, you are on HIP, is that true? Yes. All right. Now, it's, they're going to take you off of HIP at some point in time. How long, how many days have you been with the Day Reporting Center? About a month and a half, two months. See? Since I've gotten released the last time. So I'm not going to shock probate you. Um, and you need to ask them uh, about when they believe that you might be able to get off of HIP. Because I think, I think the minimum is 90 days on HIP, but you have to be successfully doing some, th some things. Not drinking, no drugs, uh, participating in the, in the uh, sessions and so forth. You gotta get a job that you can hang on to. And you got to know that you gotta hang on a job, ain't hang on to a job, because if you don't have a job, you can't pay your child support. If you can't right. pay your child support, you're gonna live in jail. With them taking 175 a week, I also can't pay my bills either. I know. And, the point there is that 175 a week may be uh, an unreasonable child support order. And we'll talk about that, but what I need to know, uh, so I, I say to you, don't focus on the 175. I need you to uh, pay some reasonable amount of money, and I'm gonna get with the uh, day reporting center folks and ask them to, uh, to see if they can help you get to family court to have that, uh, a, uh, looked at again, how reasonable is that child support order of $175 for that child when you have a second child, and this is the uh, uh, employment that you can get and that you can uh, function with, 
and this is the amount of money you can make. I can make this amount of money, but if I have to pay $75 a week, not only can I not live, my other child cannot live, and it's not fair. And I'm going to see if I can get, uh, get the day reporting center in to help you out on this. All right. Anything else I can do for you? That's all. All right. Well, good luck to you, sir. Thanks. All right. Mr. McLeod seems to be on his way to getting back in line. And he stopped to talk outside the courtroom with Deadbeat's own Ashley Anderson. Ashley? With James McLeod. And we were listening to the judge and he mentioned the day reporting center. Can you kind of talk about what that is exactly? Uh, it's a program to help people do better, get them on the right path. Is it weekly 175 it for is. child support? And how did that get set? I had a slightest idea it started that way, and it's an excessive amount and far too much for one kid. Well, it seems like the judge wants to work with you and maybe bring that down a bit, so it could be working out in your favor soon. Best of luck to you. Hope so. Now, it looks like with this guy, he was already kind of behind to begin with. So the day reporting center is where he was sent to get back on track. And it looks like Judge Delahanty thinks that it's gonna work. But as a practical matter, what Judge Delahanty needs to work with him, or somebody does, to attack that $175 a week. Oh, wow. In order to, to get to $175 a week, doesn't he have to make in excess of $300 a week? Yes, he would. And so and how many And how many people that come before the court actually do that? Right. Well, the Day Reporting Center actually will help him find another job or find extra jobs, and hopefully they'll give him the advice he needs or point him in the right direction to go get that order lowered so that he can lower it in this case. All of that's very well and good, but if he doesn't find some way to convince the court to drop it in accordance with the court order, then he, he can't get out from under. Right, he's doomed before he's even started. Exactly. If you're having trouble collecting from your deadbeat ex or you need help getting back in line, join our discussion on Facebook. You can inbox us your personal story or even upload a video. We read each and every one and we would love to hear from you. I'm Nicole Compton and until next time, this has been Deadbeat.